एवरीवन वेलकम टू स्पेक्ट्रम क्लासेस दिस वीडियो इज इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद द वाटर केमिस्ट्री वीडियोस एंड हियर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द वाटर सॉफ्टनिंग मेथड्स सो हियर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द लाइम सोडा वाटर सॉफ्टनिंग प्रोसेस रिएक्शंस इन्वॉल्व इन दैट एंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द हॉट एंड कोल्ड लाइम सोडा प्रोसेस देयर एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस calculations of lime soda requirement and numericals based on that so all these points we are going to discuss in this video so please keep watching so let's first start with the water softening methods why they require and what is hardness first we will discuss about that so hardness is due to the presence of excess amount of calcium and magnesium dissolved salt present in the water sample and if they are more than the permissible limits like for drinking water it is permissible 110 ppm at calcium carbonate scale so if we are having more than that uh, then that is called hard water and for industrial purposes there are different permissible limits for different kind of industries so that is why it is essential to remove the hardness from the water sample for the household purposes and for industrial purposes and different kind of methods has been used for this water softening methods it is essential to remove because calcium and magnesium ions interfere towards the action of soap that we have already discussed in our previous video secondly they leads to the building of lime scale in pipes and heat exchange surfaces and thus result in the galvanic corrosion in industrial boilers it leads to the problem of formation of sludge and scale priming and forming etc as well as to enhance the taste of the cooked food so it is necessary to remove the excess of calcium and magnesium ions from the water sample by different methods let us discuss about the boiler feed water so which kind of water is fed to the boilers for industrial purpose so there are two different methods one is external treatment and the other one is internal treatment method so here in this external treatment method the water is treated before it is fed to the boiler but in internal treatment method uh, it is done inside the boilers right so in the external methods lime soda process ion exchange process and zeolite process are considered whereas in internal treatment method conditioning is mainly done so calgan process carbonate conditioning and phosphate conditioning is done inside the boilers so here we are going to discuss about the lime soda process so lime soda process is a very important process first as the name suggests lime and soda here lime is calcium hydroxide and it is represented by the formula caoh whole to ice and soda is sodium carbonate and it is represented by na2co3 okay and there are several reactions involved in this process and students get scared about these reactions i'll just tell you the basic concept and the strategy which you needs to be apply over here so you will feel that all these reactions are very very simple we are having two different cations calcium and magnesium so here calcium bicarbonate suppose this is magnesium bicarbonate and these two cause temporary hardness okay these we have already discussed in our previous video next is permanent hardness permanent hardness is caused by the calcium chloride and calcium sulfate similarly magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate and other salts are also contribute towards the calcium and mag magnesium salts so the main motive from this process lime soda process is that calcium carbonate is insoluble in water so we need to prepare calcium carbonate similarly we need to prepare calcium carbonate in each step so from calcium we need to prepare the calcium carbonate by the reaction okay our main motive is to get magnesium hydroxide again magnesium hydroxide and from here also magnesium hydroxide because magnesium hydroxide is highly insoluble and it settle down at the bottom of the vessel how one can get this magnesium hydroxide by these magnesium salts so on reaction with calcium hydroxide because calcium is having hydroxyl groups in it so what is the main motive so we need to prepare first calcium to leave the temporary hardness which is calcium bicarbonate 
if we are talking about the permanent hardness calcium chloride calcium sulfate requires sodium carbonate okay soda soda is required for magnesium permanent hardness we require we require one mole of lime calcium hydroxide one mole of soda right so l plus s both are required by one mole of magnesium chloride magnesium sulfate and for temporary magnesium bicarbonate impurity we require two moles of lime okay now this is the only thing which you need to remember this is the only thing while you are doing the numericals so for calcium hydroxide what we require we require one lime for magnesium bicarbonate we require two lime and for permanent hardness of calcium chloride sulfate we require one mole of soda and for magnesium and sulfate we require one mole of lime one mole of soda so this will be better understand by the reactions which are involved over here so here i have explicitly written the different type of hardness causing salts and the reactions involved so please do not get scared about these reactions you one by one try to understand here we are having calcium bicarbonate it reacts with calcium hydroxide okay it will form calcium carbonate so the uh, our main aim is to produce calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide this is insoluble so it get precipitated which is shown by the downward arrow plus water for removal of this temporary calcium carbonate hardness we require one mole of lime magnesium bicarbonate so for this reaction we require two moles of lime right so we get magnesium hydroxide plus calcium carbonate plus water so two lime is required the next is calcium chloride okay so calcium chloride we our main motive is to produce calcium carbonate so this cannot be produced by the lime so we require soda for this reaction as we discussed earlier so here calcium chloride on reaction with sodium carbonate it will form calcium carbonate plus 2 nacl so one soda is required the next is magnesium permanent hardness so magnesium chloride so our main motive is to produce magnesium hydroxide so here magnesium chloride on reaction with calcium hydroxide or lime it will produce magnesium hydroxide plus calcium sulfate so this is again a hardness causing salt so how one can remove this so this will on reaction with sodium carbonate because from calcium sulfate we need to prepare the calcium carbonate so this is interchange actually so we require so this is calcium sulfate plus na2co3 on reaction with calcium carbonate plus na2so4 so what is required one mole of lime is required and one mole of soda is required so i have written over here l plus s the next is if we are having acid impurity right excess of acid is present then if it is it is in the presence of hcl or h2so4 so the reaction will takes place in the same manner so 2hcl plus caoh whole twice so it forms cacl2 plus h2 and further it needs to be removed by in the form of calcium carbonate so it on reaction with soda it will produce calcium carbonate and in this way to remove the acid impurity we require lime plus soda further for dissolved carbon dioxide carbon dioxide on reaction with calcium hydroxide it forms calcium carbonate so for carbon dioxide we require lime and here again for sodium bicarbonate if bicarbonate impurity is there in excess then calcium hydroxide or lime is required and in this way it produces calcium carbonate plus sodium carbonate this sodium carbonate is nothing but this is the soda that is why i have written over here l minus s l stands for lime which is required in the reaction but it produces soda is produces in the reaction so if we require this soda in the reaction so here this is the step from where we have to deduct this you will better understand from the numerical problems now the 
coagulants so coagulants are nothing but this is like potassium or in common language we used to call it fitkari is an example of these coagulants how fitkari or the potassium alum reacts with the water fine suspended particles on coagulation they becomes bigger and they settle down at the bottom so coagulants are very important in this process that we are going to discuss aluminium hydroxide is insoluble which get precipitated and calcium sulfate is formed and this calcium sulfate is on further reaction with soda that is na2co3 forms calcium carbonate and this right so you just simply understand the concept that we require magnesium hydroxide and calcium carbonate at the end to remove the excess of calcium and magnesium so that is the concept and after practicing one or two time you will definitely understand the concept now we are going to discuss about the hot and cold lime soda process so the reactions involved are same in both hot and cold lime soda process but the process through which they are going to react that are different so here is cold lime soda process and here is hot lime soda process it will be better for you to understand over here how to prepare the diagram okay so in this way and then one is inlet over here the other inlet is also there so these are the inlets you produce and it is the mechanical stirrer this is cold process okay so here and now from this inlets you just make a cylinder now you just they do this in this way this is the outlet and these are the base lines for support this is the base so this will be easy for you to understand how to draw this picture uh, this is the raw water inlet right inlet this is the mechanical stirrer this is soda lime chemical inlet and this is the mechanical stirrer and here is the reaction chamber actually so uh, this raw water is mixed with the soda lime chemicals uh, with the help of this mechanical stirrer and they are allowed to react in this way in this way the water comes over here in upward directions and here is the sludge which particles or fine particles which are uh, in the form of calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide calcium carbonate plus magnesium hydroxide these two are insoluble so they are suspended in this form this is called sludge sludge okay these suspended particles are known as sludge now here we are having a wooden fibers to filter wooden fibers for filtering and here we are having the what soft water okay here at this chamber so at this stage we are having and it is the water outlet soft water outlet so in this way you can draw the picture so this is cold process in the hot process we are having this raw water is added and chemicals are added from this side this is our raw water inlet this is our chemicals soda and lime chemicals and here this is again same and in between we are having at this moment another cone inside this rather having the mechanical stirrer we are having this water sample okay and here is the steam inlet steam inlet so steam is introduced over here raw water is coming from this side 
chemicals are coming from this side and the reaction is allowed over here so here hot process is fine because in the hot process calcium and magnesium is effectively removed as it is more insoluble at high temperature okay so that is the reason here reaction is going on and we get soft water over here and sludge particles suspended again over here this is for sludge outlet and these are the ways to support this assembly and a soft water outlet is from this side okay so this is our soft water outlet and this soft water here since these suspended particles are still there they are so fine so if we add coagulants then these can agglomerate it and we are having filter outside this and through this filter we are having the soft water so here we are having different different filters like fine sand this is our uh, coarse sand here we are having gravel layer so three different layers we are having fine sand coarse sand and gravels so through which this water which is produced from this so hot water process and after addition of coagulants over here we are having this different assembly so this is also termed as batch softening method this hot water process if we are having this filter outside then this is called batch softening method and if we are having filter over here here we are having so this is also termed as continuous softening so continuous softening is there and here is the batch softening so why batch softening because we are having this separate unit for filtration right and here we are having this filtration assembly over here and we are getting the soft water out of this so in this way you can draw these images now advantages and disadvantages of the lime soda process the advantages are it reduces hardness as well as alkalinity it also reduces the total dissolved solid and silica of the feed water secondly feed water needs not to be clarified so before adding to this lime soda process the raw water need not to be clarified completely before the softening process the third point is that the level of carbon dioxide can also be reduced using the hot softening process the disadvantages of lime soda process are it can reduces the hardness of water but can't remove it the second point is that the feed water quality may change from source to source which makes adjusting the amount of soda and lime very cumbersome so i hope you understand this lime soda process and in the next video we are going to discuss about the calculations of uh, amount of soda and lime required for soften the water and numericals based on that Thank you all.